Freaking at the Freakers Bowl time right here, y'all, on reallibertymedia.com. It's Friday night. That means it's Freakers Ball time. It should be Freakers Ball time, and it is Freakers Ball time. However, uh, this will be a moose-free Freakers Ball. Well, so why, you ask, is it not balls to the wall? Well, it's because I, I didn't know until like five minutes before the show here. So, <laughs> so I was already all set up for Freaker's Ball instead of Balls to the Wall. Not that there's really a lot of change in the setup there between uh, Balls and Balls, Balls to the Wall and Freaker's Ball. But uh, there is a little bit of change, and eh, it doesn't make too much difference. It's just a name, and, and what the hell's in a name? Anyway, I think I, did, I, think I mentioned last week uh, at some point doing a Balls to the Wall show that I might as well just do them all as Freaker's Ball and not do Balls to the Wall. I, I don't know. I don't really know the difference. But uh, if if any of you all know the difference, you can let me know. Um, so anyway, hi, howdy, and welcome to all the folks out there tuned in from all the various places you may be tuned in from. Hopefully you're tuned in on reallibertymedia.com on the Freaker's Ball show page there. Uh, and if not, maybe you're over there on vaughn.live slash reallibertymedia.com. Or maybe you're listening on the audio stream, which goes uh, many places and uh, to all those many places. Hi and howdy to y'all, whether that be on rlmradio.xyz, on realliberty.org, on freedomsnetwork.com, or via the, the RLM radio app, or... <laughs> Internet radio or tuned in, tune in, not tuned in, tune in. Uh, I don't know where else the hell, the hell all goes. Shoutcast.org, yeah, all those places. It goes all over the place. Anyway, anyway, hi and howdy to all the folks over here in the actual chat room that we do. Hey, Grammy says it's party time, and I have to agree with Grammy. Yes, it's party time. Party on down. Get on down. Have a good old time right here. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> it's a Freaker's Ball. Oh, by the way, I'm Grimner. Uh, it is August 2nd, 2019. This is the first Freaker's Ball of August of 2019. The first of uh, five. Yep, there's five Fridays this week, a month. <laughs> five Fridays this week. No, five Fridays this month. And uh, this is, is the first one. So we get five Freaker's Balls. That's a lot of balls. Balls all over the place, man, let me tell you. Uh, this particular month. So uh, welcome, and welcome to all the folks over here in the chat room. A great group of folks that we always have hanging out here in this place. We got the barman, of course, the barman, my 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 oldest IRC friend. He's a bot that I created back in the 90s. Uh, we got Beetle and Cowboy Tech and myself, and the Moose Girl is still logged in. Although the Moose Girl apparently went to see a... Um, what, what do you call it? Grateful Dead cover band? I believe that's what she said. What she told me, yeah. Grateful Dead cover band is where the Moose Girl is off to tonight. So uh, have a good time out there trucking. Keep on trucking. Ow. <laughs> Sorry, well, I won't do that again. <laughs> anyway, we got DC and Hantai and Azamo, Chalcedony and Miss Graham Z. Ooch, by the way. Happy birthday, Grams. Tomorrow, uh, at, well, midnight, I guess, tonight, uh, is Grammy's birthday. She starts. She, she will be six years old, she said. She told me earlier today. So, happy sixth birthday, Gram Z, Gram E, Miss Mary. Uh, also, we got I.B. Dante and Java Doctor and the Meister Brown, Mr. Pondergander. Uh, Miss Kate, the lovely Miss Kate, the wonderful Miss Kate. Mr. Rob works in his awesome uh, bubbler that he passes around here on uh, a you know, regular basis. And we always appreciate that. Mr. Romes is with us tonight. Vanna White bot. Mr. Vincent Easley, the two, the number two. Uh, we got Weatherdork and uh, Phantom and Circle in Circle. She's asleep. I'm sure she's asleep. Anyway, Cyborg Noodle and Ensive and Frumpy, uh, the Grommet Man, Hagrid, Hagrid, <laughs> sounds Scottish to me, Hagrid, all right, uh, and JJ's, who is actually Scottish, JJ's 999, 
who's actually Scottish. Yeah. So we got gifts and prints and pwn sauce for you people that might get pwned somewhere along the way. And we got the sock puppet, uh, the masterful sock puppet, and the smart as bot. Yes, indeed. All kinds of great folks here in the chat. Come on over. And in this chat, you can talk about stuff that I talk about here. Converse with me. You can make song requests. You can beat on people, and they'll beat back on you. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all good. It's all fun over here. Before I go any further, however, I should mention this to you. I need to mention this to you. Um, the, the site that I stream video from, which is uh, the, the last in a long line of available free Internet video streaming sites, is having some financial difficulty. And they would like you, if you might, um, to assist them with uh, a, a little bit of funding. And if you want to throw some funding their way, Vaughn.live, um, it would maybe help us stay on, on the video, to keep on doing the video show. Uh, here's a link for that. I'll put the link also into the... Uh, uh, the, the post show blog, blog blog post post show blog post easy for me to say uh, anyway so help out Vaughn uh, they they have costs that they need to cover and uh, increase service stability and we all know that service stability would be a great thing to increase um, also uh, by the way and uh, since we're on the topic and the subject um, if you know of any other free live video streaming sites forward that information to me I need to know about other sites that provide that ser the service that Vaughn provides that I used to get from Ustream.com or I got from Mogulus which turned into Livestream uh, Justin TV these have all gone by the wayside by the way uh, as far as free live streaming of things uh, you, you can still live stream for free on sites like YouTube but you can't do this show on YouTube live because well we play music and um, yeah they would not appreciate that in the slightest degree uh, so <laughs> anyway uh, if you um, w would like to uh, go ahead and uh, make a donation to Vaughn.live there through that link that I provided in the chat and that will be in the, the post show blog. Um, just make a note that, that you are donating in the name of reallibertymedia.com or uh, just Real Liberty Media because they'll, they'll recognize my account. Um, and, that, and that's not really that important, but uh, it would be good for them to know that uh, we are trying to support them in their efforts to stay up and running and afloat and to improve their service as well. Uh, they've been very good overall. Occasionally, they're not. Occasionally, you get some little lag going on over there, uh, reloading a video or whatever. But mostly, they're pretty good. And it's good quality, and it's a good service, and then they don't bother me with anything. They just let me come on here and broadcast every Friday night doing this show every Friday night for these three hours. So, just say it, you know. It's a, it's not necessarily a direct uh, donation <laughs> to what we do here, but it will help keep this uh, Freaker's Ball show a running. Uh, and, and again, if I say it, if you know of any other uh, free live video streaming sites, inform me. I need to not, I need that information. So uh, anyway, so um, bah, 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 what else? What else? What else? What else? Huh. I think that's all the the uh, the uh, important news. Um, some of y'all may know, those of you in the chat anyway. I, ha I had an issue with my air conditioning unit this week. Uh, it went out on um, last Sunday afternoon, which was okay for Sunday because um, the house stayed cool throughout that night, and there was already late in the afternoon on Sunday so but uh, then in order to get the part I had to wait you know Monday morning and uh, locate the uh, part that I needed I 
uh, troubleshot the unit and figured out what the part was. And um, there's a big capacitor, big old capacitor there that starts the uh, uh, the motor, the fan motor, and also runs the uh, compressor there um, for that. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I, I I suffered through three days basically, uh, two and a half odd days of uh, uncomfortable heat. And I say suffered because when it comes to heat, I'm a freaking wuss. I, I I am not good with heat. Uh, I'm okay with it for short periods of time. You know, I go outside, I work in the yard, I do whatever I got to do, and it's hot out there, and that's fine. I don't I don't mind doing that. But I want I need to be able to come back into a cool house uh, to uh, dissipate all that heat for myself, which is good. But on these, on those days, the heat was inescapable. The house was 90 degrees inside, and uh, running fans and opening windows, and all the different stuff you might think to do without an, uh, a modern refrigerated air conditioning unit. <laughs> horrible, horrible. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> on Wednesday afternoon, the part came in, and I installed it, and the air conditioner started working. And uh, so it's been nice uh, since then. It still took several hours for the house to actually cool down, but just having the air blowing made me know uh, that I was good to go, even though it wasn't cool yet, uh, re really until Thursday morning. But, uh, yeah, so yesterday and today has been good um, and should continue to be good. <laughs> but just let me just say that if you if you ever uh, if you if you if you're uh, a lot of people say they don't like air conditioning, and maybe they don't. I don't know, but I I I, I would find it hard to live without personally. Um, yeah, and I, well, I never had it in San Diego, but we're right on the ocean. Didn't need it down there. Um, it was it was good. It was it was great down there. Out here in New Mexico, it's we're not on the ocean. We're, you know, over a thousand miles from the closest ocean. Well, I don't know. As the bird flies, it's probably less. But as you drive, it's still over a thousand miles. <laughs> Either way, uh, we 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 don't get that that nice uh, temperate climate that they get down there in San Diego, uh, or you know, I, I guess any coastal area where where you get the. Uh, the ocean effect that keeps everything nice and the same. So uh, uh, that was, uh, you know, important to nobody other than me. Uh, lots of people in the chat tried to help me out with various advice on how I might uh, fix my issue. And, you know, I tried. I, I've seen these things before, these uh, ice cooler uh, ice cooler things, you, you, you put a like a, a fan, uh, you make your own little custom cover, and you make a fan, and you point that into the cooler, and you fill it with ice, and then you have like a little tube coming out the other side that you can point. It, you know, <laughs> I did that. I did two of them, actually. I did, uh, yeah, and uh, they're not, um, they're not really effective, Not not in severe heat. Um, they they uh, they work for a few minutes, but th that ice melts off really really fast in those things. Uh, big jugs, you know, gallon jugs of ice, or the small uh, water bottles full of ice, or the the frozen ice packs that you that you just put in there to keep stuff cool. Yeah, those they all melt pretty fast when you're running hot water. I mean, hot air uh, from the room to the in inside. That hot air just blows down onto the ice, melts the ice, so it, it cools off for a few minutes. <laughs> anyway, it's a great idea, it's a great concept, but uh, yeah, no, that that really doesn't work. <laughs> so anyway, um, enough of that nonsense and yapping and yammering. Uh, we'll we'll get to some stories here in a little bit, but right now we're gonna kick it off with some music, as we do here on the Freakers Ball, y'all. So uh, we're going to kick it off with a band called Steve and Seagulls. And this song is a, a Lenny Kravitz tune. Yeah. 
that ended a little more abruptly than I thought I was going to. <laughs> All right. Well, that there was a, a moose girl request, which I, I, I queued up before I realized uh, she wasn't going to be here for this evening. Either way, that was Hell's Bells, an ACDC song by a band called Hey Seed Dixie. Uh, before that, we had ACDC themselves from 1979 with Mr. Bon Scott there on the lead vocals doing a whole lot of Rosie. And we kicked it off with Steven Seagulls. They're a uh, Swedish bluegrass band, I guess. Uh, I guess that's how you would call them. Anyway, doing uh, Lenny Kravitz, Are You Gonna Go My Way? Uh, so it's got an interesting uh, selection of uh, tunages there uh, for you all to get the show kicked off here on this Friday night. Friday evening, Friday morning, Saturday morning for some of y'all, I guess. Depending on where the hell you live. I, I don't know where y'all are. Oh, I know, I know where most of you are, but... <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, so so that was that, yeah. It's, it's, good, it's, good, it's good stuff. Um. <laughs> oh, man. Hopefully y'all got some uh, nice plans for the weekend, uh, Stuff you might be thinking about doing or going to be doing out there over the weekend. Uh, something that's that's fun and interesting and cool and all that stuff. With any luck. You know? So, uh, anyhow, let me see what we got here lined up for you. Um, news. News-wise. I say news, but, you know, it's Whatever it is, it's it's, it's kind of nonsensical stuff that goes on around the world, uh, out there in the world. <laughs> and I collect throughout the weeks as I go through and I, I check things out and I, I find stuff that uh, sounds fun to me or interesting, whether fun or not. I, I don't know. That's that's really up to you to decide. Um, I just saw this one not, not just shortly before the show started, uh, so I haven't actually had an opportunity to read through this article yet, and it kind of sounds like old news, but apparently it's new news, um, so, yeah, Cowboy Tech is asking, balls to the wall, is that like old time wallflowers? You know, um, I, I suppose it could be if you looked at it in the proper context, <laughs> or, or the improper context, as the case may be. Uh, but yeah, the uh, and, and I don't think it's necessarily such old time wallflowers. I'm betting today, if you went to one of these like school dances or something, you'd have a certain uh, amount of of uh, the young men uh, that were uh, afraid to talk to the young women. Uh, standing with their backs to the wall or their balls to the wall, as the case may be, <laughs> because they're they're uh, shy yet and, and unsure of themselves, and have, have not gained the confidence to walk up to a girl and say, "Hey, baby, want to dance?" <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here it is on the Guardian. dot com. Oh, 420. Very nice. Uh, uh, TheGuardian.com. Pentagon testing mass surveillance balloons across the U.S. of A. Now, why this is being reported in a British publication rather than a United States publication? Eh, I'll let you decide on that. But they say it's an exclusive story here on The Guardian. The high altitude balloons promise to promise a cheap monitoring platform, monitoring you platform, that could follow multiple cars and boats for extended periods. The United States military is conducting wide area surveillance uh, tests, tests, they're calling them tests, across six Midwest states using experimental high altitude balloons. Documents filed with the FCC reveal. Why, why is this with the FCC? Why is it not the FAA? Uh, I, I mean, this seems like an aviation kind of deal. 
But no, they say it's the uh, deal. They're dealing with the FCC here. Anyway, up to 25 unmanned solar-powered balloons. Solar-powered balloons. Hmm. Uh, are being launched from rural South Dakota and drifting 250 miles through an area spanning portions of Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Missouri before concluding in central Illinois. Traveling in the stratosphere at altitudes of up to 65,000 feet to keep them away from your peeping peepers, the balloons are intended to provide a persistent surveillance system to locate and deter narcotic trafficking and homeland security threats. <laughs> narcotic trafficking. Uh, why? 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 What do you care about narcotic trafficking? What business is it of yours if somebody wants to use some narcotics. Anyway, that was according to a filing made on behalf of Sierra Nevada Corporation, an aerospace and defense company. The balloons are carrying high-tech radars designed to simultaneously track many individual vehicles, day or night, through any kind of weather. Yep, 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 yep. The tests, which have not previously been reported, received an FCC license, F, the FCC, license to, uh, thank you, Steve, uh, uh, license to operate from mid-July until September, following similar flights licensed last year. Arthur Holland, Michael, I guess that's how you say his name, might be Michelle, I don't know. Uh, the co-director of the Center for the Study of the Drone at Bard College in New York said, what this new technology, as if balloons are new technology, proposes uh, is to watch everyone, everything they're doing at once. Sometimes it's referred to as combat TiVo because when an event happens somewhere in the surveilled area, you can potentially rewind the tape to see exactly what occurred and rewind even further to see who was involved and where they came from. The tests have been commissioned by the U.S. Southern Command, Southcom, which is responsible for a disaster response, intelligence operations, and security cooperation in the Caribbean and Central and South America. But, but, but wait, this is being done in the Midwest. Uh, Southcom is a joint effort by the U.S. Army, Navy, Air Force, and other forces, other forces, other unnamed forces, and one of its key roles is identifying and intercepting drug shipments headed for the United States. So let me go back over that slightly there a little bit, because... Um, really? Disaster response, intelligence operations, and security cooperation. What does any of that have to do with drug shipments? Are, is, is, is a drug a disaster? No. Is it an intelligence operation? Uh, no. Security? No. No, no, it doesn't meet doesn't meet any of your qualifications for what you're supposed to be up to. Uh, it says here, we do not think that American cities should be subject to wide area surveillance in which every vehicle could be tracked wherever they go, said Jay Stanley, a senior policy analyst at the ACLU. Even in tests, they're collecting a lot of data on all Americans. Who's driving to the Union House? The church, the mosque, the Alzheimer's clinic, he said. We should not go down the road of allowing this to be used in the United States. And it's disturbing, to say the least, to hear that these tests are being carried out by the military, no less. For many years, Sierra Nevada has supplied Southcom with light aircraft packed with millions of dollars 
worth of sensors, which then flew over Mexico, Colombia, Panama, and the Caribbean Sea. But planes require expensive crews and can only fly for a few, a few hours at a time. In a report to the Senate Armed Services Committee this February, Southcom's commander, Admiral Craig Fowler, wrote, While improving efficiency, we still only successfully interdict about 6% of known drug movements. Drug movements. Which, again, has nothing to do with their stated purpose. <laughs> The new balloons promise a cheap surveillance platform that could follow multiple cars and boats for extended periods, and because winds often travel in directions at different altitudes, the balloons can usually hover over a given area by simply ascending or descending. Neither Sierra Nevada nor U.S. Southcom responded to requests for comment. Imagine that. However, the rival balloon operator, Worldview, that's an ominous name, recently announced that it had carried out multi-week test missions in which its own stratospheric balloons were able to hover over a five-mile diameter area for six and a half hours in larger areas for days at a time. Yeah, it's up there. It's watching you. There's a monster on the loose. Yes, there is indeed a monster on the loose. And you voted for it. <laughs> well, maybe not you. <laughs> but some people did. They voted to have that there, to, to have that available. And they gladly pay, quote, their taxes, as if they own the taxes that they're forced to pay at gunpoint, although many of them would never get to the point of gunpoint because... They're so proud to support this kind of operation, uh, this kind of leashes being put on them, these eyes watching them. George Orwell could have never dreamed of such things. But that's all right. You're, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, tinfoil hatters. <laughs> you, me. <laughs> Especially me. Uh, maybe not y'all, but to me, yes, I've been a tinfoil hatter for a long, long time. Uh, meaning uh, uh, the uh, commonly used phrase of conspiracy theorist. Uh, yeah, and, and I know, I've known for a long time because they stated many years ago that conspiracy theorists were their enemy. If you theorize about a conspiracy because you don't have the actual information, but all signs point to a conspiracy against you, against the American people, against the world, against other countries, to do bad and nasty things to you, or to cover up in bad and nasty things that have been done to you, you're con you're, you are theorizing about a conspiracy, therefore you are a conspiracy theorist, or, my term, my my not my term, but the term that I prefer, tinfoil hatter. Because, yeah, I, I, I have to wear my tinfoil hat to make sure the uh, the brain rays don't get into my head. <laughs> anyway, from activist post here today, uh, new FBI documents adds fringe conspiracy theories as the next big domestic terror threat. You, by theorizing about their conspiracies against you, are a terrorist threat to them. We got a photo here in the, in the or an image, I guess I should say. It's not a, an actual photo, but they got an image here of the, uh, what's that game that they play? Um, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, so they got like a, kind of like a, a zombified Vanna White there. And a, and a zombified soldier holding a some some sort of military grade weapon <laughs> with with the clue up on the board. You are all terrorists. Yeah, y'all 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 are terrorists. Yes, indeed. Here, 
So, uh, by uh, Nicholas West on the Activist Post today, it has already been well documented how many government agencies have compiled lists containing Americans who are potential terrorists, in their view, in their eyes, in their, their way of thinking. Back in 2013, Michael Snyder highlighted 72 types of Americans, which included me and you and others, who made some sort of potential threat list. Not that they were made ahead of were potentially threats, but they made the list of potential threat people. And he provided the links to all of the documents. As comprehensive as that was, there is a brand new document, fresh off the presses, that has been obtained by, of all places, Yahoo News which purports, purports to illustrate a new category the FBI is zeroing in on. Fringe conspiracy theories. Are you listening, Beth? <laughs> yeah, who states that this is a first for the agency, which it's really not, but that's okay. Anyway, it goes on to say the document specifically mentions... QAnon, a shadowy network that believes in a deep state conspiracy against President Trump, and Pizzagate, and the theory that, oh, it was a Pizzagate, the theory that pedophile, a pedophile ring, including Clinton Associates, was being run out of the basement of a Washington, D.C. pizza restaurant, which they say doesn't actually have a basement. Now, I, I I don't really know nothing about the QAnon thing, but I know several folks here uh, in the Real Liberty Media zone um, are are followers and believers in the Q or QAnon, as the case may be, and they post up things like uh, "Where we go, one we go all" or "WWG whatever," um, and as far as the uh, the pedophile ring from that that pizza restaurant, I'm saying absolutely that occurred uh, there at that place, and there, there is no question in my mind about that. So even though they couldn't nail me on the QA non, all, all, except for the fact that I do tweet out uh, blog posts with the hashtag the uh, W. What is it? What is it again? Uh, WWG one WGA where we go one we go all I tweet out those with that hashtag because a certain broadcasters here use that hashtag in in their in their blog posts and I tweet those blog posts out with whatever hashtags they choose to use I'm not gonna not do that because that's part of what I do here on Real Liberty Media anyway we already know that nearly everyone who questions just about anything can land one on the one one of those people on one of these lists. So the fact that they are singling out QAnon and PizzaGate should come as no surprise. Instead, it's more likely the real impact is highlighted in the following paragraph. The FBI assesses the conspiracy theories very uh, theory assesses these conspiracy theories very likely will emerge, spread, and evolve in the modern information marketplace, occasionally driving both groups and individual extremists Beth, to carry out criminal or violent acts. Now, I would never carry out a criminal or violent act based upon these particular uh, beliefs, uh, information, uh, but they think that somehow you are going to carry out criminal or violent acts. That's it, according to that document. It also goes on to say the FBI believes conspiracy theory-driven extremists are likely to increase during the 2020 presidential election cycle. But why? It's all rigged. It's all fake. The, the, the election means nothing. 
It's all it's all figured out well ahead of time. So yeah, why would you? Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. So it's not deranged and violent people carrying out the acts who occasionally latch on to strange ideas. It's the opposite. It's the ideas that create the deranged and violent people. This is how they think. This is the way your government thinks. Your government jackboots calling themselves the FBI or the NSA or whatever a group they want to assign themselves to. That's the way they think. They believe this. Furthermore, it's open communication on the Internet that makes it all possible. And especially during a selection season. A election season. <laughs> the advent of the Internet and social media has enabled promoters of conspiracy theories to produce and share greater volumes of material via online platforms that larger audience of consumers can quickly and easily access. I share as much of this information as I find and I find interesting as I can or as I decide to do, and nobody listens, nobody cares. Yeah, you could just look at the stats on, on my Twitter account and understand that there's there's really, I mean, I mean there's, Nobody pays attention to what I got to say. Uh, that I know. Um, <laughs> uh, very, the the only time any anybody paid attention is why is when I insult the the the, the freaking lefties. Now I can in, insult the righties all all day long, which I do. Um, well, not all day long, but occasionally I do. Uh, as much as I do the lefties, and they don't really get care. They don't give a crap. But them lefties, man, they're they they are. They they are very thin skinned people. They they will not take it. <laughs> it is interesting that Yahoo, which very odd that Yahoo got this story, also highlights a statement from the FBI where they say they can never initiate an investigation based solely on First Amendment protected activity. As with all of our investigations, the FBI can never monitor a website or a social media platform without probable cause. Adding, the FBI document focuses, focuses on ideological motivations. FBI Director Ray, in his testimony last week, asserted that the FBI is concerned only with violence and not people's beliefs. But since they believe your beliefs will drive you to violence, then they have probable cause to monitor you for your beliefs. They, they do this thing. <laughs> it's this circular logic that they use uh, that, that, that brings them to a spot where they want to be. This would seem to conflict with a recent report from NextGov that could not be clearer when it states the FBI wants tech to track social media for criminals and terrorists before they act. I do believe I covered that story on this show. It might have been on, on Grim Leftovers, but I, I think it was on this show. I'm not positive on that. Um, anyway, all of this time, all, all of this comes at a time where big tech is purging independent media, such as Real Liberty Media, although they haven't purged us yet because we are so far under the radar as to not even make a blip, the slightest blip. Uh, so they're, they're purging the independent media themselves, and they seem to be exta expanding, and they're definitely expanding, their definition of dangerous language and potentially deadly topics that are a threat to society, whatever that means. Apparently, they've now been given further marching orders. Uh, anyway, they have a link here at the bottom of this article to the, the actual full 15-page document that paints us one and all as domestic terrorists or potential domestic terrorists uh, uh, for, for what it's worth. So feel free to peruse all of that there. Um, and uh, make use of it uh, for what, whatever purpose you may find. 
All right, we're going to play some more uh, videos all right now for you here. Potentially terrorist videos, I guess. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I got a fever. And the only cure. After a series of staggering beats, Blue Oyster Cult assembled in the recording studio in late 1976. Ah, oh, yeah, very nice, very nice indeed. Cream and white room there from back in 1968. Yes, indeed. Uh, very good stuff. Monroe's retro release there. Before that, we had Carlos Santana doing While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Uh, I'm not sure who that girl was that was singing, but she's really good. Um, let's see if it says anything here on that particular thing. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I am not seeing the girl's name there. Uh, so, uh, anyway, whatever. She She's really good. Um, yeah. And we kicked it off with an old clip from Saturday Night Live there. More cowbell, the... Uh, <laughs> the, the uh, uh, pun on uh, uh, Blue Oyster Cult's uh, Don't Fear the Reaper there and uh, Christopher Walken doing the, the uh, director or whatever producer Bruce Dickinson I got a fever and the only cure is more cowbell <laughs> always loved that one man and I'm sure most of you did have as well uh, so uh, yeah good, good, uh, all good stuff all good stuff uh, in my way of thinking, and po hopefully in your way of thinking as well. Uh, just uh, interesting, cool, good, good, good music that that I like, and maybe you like. I don't know. You like it? <laughs> oh, I'm talking to a very quiet room here today. Uh, uh, this this evening on on the show. Uh, so I, I mean, maybe they're all busy doing something. I don't know where everybody's at tonight, but. Uh, uh, hopefully they're they're here watching and just not talking much, having a good time doing whatever else uh, with whoever other people. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm gonna uh, give you some more informational type stories here, stuff that I find interesting. Hopefully you find interesting as well that uh, maybe uh, maybe adds adds important information to your life that you can use. Eh, who knows? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, now you've heard people say, and probably right here in this chat room, you've, you've heard people say that uh, you know when uh, youngsters smoke weed that it that it messes up their head. Apparently, at least according to this study, that's nonsense. Which I could have told you. I mean, I smoked weed since the time I was 13. All the way up through whenever. Uh, anyway, but no, it, it uh, certainly did not um, cause me any de de any poor effects, any bad effects. Uh, anyway, according to this here on HuffsandPuffs.com. Huffs and Puffs. No link between adolescent marijuana use and adult brain structure, fine study. A study conducted by researchers at Arizona State University has found that adolescent marijuana use may not, and later on it says definitely doesn't, but anyway, it may not pose much long, or any long-term risk on brain function at all. You got some really weird wording there. Uh, may not and much at all. Yeah, so those those words don't really necessarily go together. Anyway, due to due to due to be published in next month's issue of Drug and Alcohol Dependence, which you could not become physically dependent on marijuana. You may come become. Uh, You know, it's, it's you may find yourself creating a habit out of using it, but it's not, like I said, physically, you can't physically develop a dependence upon marijuana. Um, so 
putting this in a dependence magazine, or I guess it's a magazine, I don't know, it doesn't say says next month's issue, doesn't say of what. Uh, the, the piece of research tested associations between prospectively assessed trajectories of adolescent cannabis use and adult brain structure in a sample of boys followed to adulthood. For the study, the researchers analyzed self-reported marijuana use among boys aged 13 to 19 in Pittsburgh in the year 1980. The 1,000 boys examined were then categorized in the four following adolescent cannabis trajectories. Non-users or infrequent users, desisters, escalators, chronic relatively frequent users. Does that mean they use the chronic? <laughs> After a thorough analysis over the years, the researchers noted boys in different trajectory groups did not differ in terms of adult brain structure in any subcortical or cortical regions of interest. Furthermore, a subset of 181 of the boys subsequently underwent structural neuroimaging in adulthood when they were between ages of 30 to 36. That subset was then tested to identify any differences in adult brain structure. Conclusion? The researchers inferred that the adolescent marijuana use had no link with structural brain differences in adulthood. Even boys with the highest level of marijuana consumption rate in adolescence showed subcortical brain volumes and cortical brain volumes and thickness in adulthood that were in line to those boys with almost no exposure to marijuana throughout adolescence. And they've got a, a link here to the uh, entire study that you could read, uh, but I think it, it speaks for itself that uh, people freaking out over kids having access to marijuana uh, they're they're just um, blowing smoke. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it doesn't affect you in a negative manner. So uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. You you anti marijuana heads. Now, this guy, he was on something, I would imagine, but whatever it was, it probably wasn't marijuana. <sighs> Who knows what he was on? Either way, here it is. Uh, from uh, yesterday, posted on newsbreakinglive.com. Man arrested by FBI after robbing bank using note with his own name and address. <laughs> Police have taken a man into custody after he robbed a bank while giving the teller a note that included his name and address, according to WLB-TV, uh, WLBT-TV, which I believe is in Mississippi, uh, although I, I assumed this was going to be a Florida story, but uh, yeah, anyway. Michael Harrell, 54, robbed the bank on Monday, getting, getting the bank teller at a U.S. bank location to hand over money. He handed the teller a note, which included his name and address. The FBI followed up with the person at the address who turned out to be the suspect. <laughs> oh, God. And as uh, Bill Engvall said, I think it was Bill Engvall, pretty sure. Could have been one of the other guys, one of those other redneck guys. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, you can't fix, stupid. <laughs> there, there ain't no fix for stupid. <laughs> oh man, how how do you do that? How, just just exactly how are you that stupid? How is anybody that stupid? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> All right, Grammy already covered that one. Oh, I don't know if she covered it or not. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of it just because I found it humorous. And, um, and, and it is a satire article, but uh, 
the truth involved in the, the satire is heavy. Because I, even though they're making fun of them, the global warming alarmists, I, I believe this will, uh, this is actually probably going to turn out to be accurate in the long run. Experts warn we have only 12 years left until they change the timeline on global warming again. It's not that we have 12 years left until we all die. No, it's 12 years until they change the timeline on the global warming. Climate experts have solemnly warned that we have only 12 years left until they change the dates on global warming again. If we don't take action, then in 12 years we will have to explain why the world hasn't ended and come up with a new number, one UN scientist warned. This is a very serious threat, and we urge everyone to hand, uh, to hand control of the economy of, to the government immediately before we have no more time left to change the timeline again. The scientific consensus is that roughly 10 to 12 years from now, the world will be flooded with new, oh, not flooded by thing, icebergs melting, no, flooded with new doomsday predictions. This can be avoided if we overhaul the economy and become socialists, according to a non-political, unbiased, sciencey type guys. <laughs> Should we not change our ways, our old predictions will melt. Yes, the predictions will melt, not the icebergs. Dangerously raising the chance of us having to move the goalposts once again, said Al Gore. Do you really want me to have to write another book, film, another movie, and, and go on another tour in my private jet just because you dingbats couldn't be bothered to alter your lifestyles? I don't think so. Let's all get on board with this 12-year figure, or we'll have to push back the date again. <laughs> which they've done uh, I, I don't know how many times now uh, yeah <laughs> so <laughs> All right, let's see what uh, Cowboy Tech's got here for us whatever you're doing today do it with all the confidence of a four year old in a Batman t-shirt <laughs> that, that's that's actually uh, uh, that's, that's actually very good advice because, you know, four-year-olds of Batman t-shirts have no fear of anything. <laughs> uh, and if you're going to be doing something, you might as well be confident of what it is you're going to do, right? Um, I, I would say that's probably a, 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 good, a good thing. All right, another cannabis story here. Cannabis weed pot type story here for you. And by the way, this is also true of hemp, although they're just talking about cannabis here on this particular story you can't even get to the top of the, the posting because of the way they got their thing set up uh, it's on it's posted on minds.com um and, and it's and it's uh, the the headline is is what uh, i can't read the top anyway it says basically cannabis is 50 times stronger than aspirin pain relief. 50 times stronger. That's quite a bit stronger. Um, it's, it's amazing, but it's true. So, this is posted by Subverse, or on Subverse, I guess, uh, by Mac Moley on, on Minds.com. Uh, researchers at the University of Guelph, uh I don't know how to say that word, found now how the sativa strain of the cannabis plant creates important pain-relieving molecules that are 30 times more powerful at reducing inflammation than aspirin. Their findings show the potential to create a naturally, naturally derived pain treatment that gives potent relief without the risk of addiction to prescribed pills. That's, that's, that's great stuff. Uh, Tariq Akhtar, a professor at the University of Gulas, uh Molecular and Cellular Biology Department, said, There's clearly a need to develop alternatives for relief of acute and chronic pain that goes beyond opioids. 
These molecules are non-psychoactive and they target inflammation at the source, which makes them ideal painkillers. The research team partnered with Anna Hit International Corp., a Toronto-based company, which licensed the patent from the University of Guelph to biosynthesize... I can't say that word. Guelph, I don't know how you say G-U-E-L-P-H. Uh, anyway, biosynthesize canaflavin, canflavin A and B, outside of the cannabis plant. Professor Akhtar worked with the uh, MCB professor Stephen Rothstein on a procedure that uses a combination of biochemistry and genomics. They successfully determined how cannabis makes two important molecules named canflavin A and canflavin B, known as flavonoids, which produce anti-inflammatory benefits that are nearly 30 times more effective, gram for gram, than aspirin. In past decades, research into these molecules stalled, in part because cannabis research was highly regulated since its legalization in Canada and improved genomics research. The two researchers were able to analyze and understand how cannabis sativa biosynthesized canflavins. Our objective was to better understand how these molecules are made, which is relatively a, a relatively straightforward exercise these days, since, uh, yeah, they, they, just because they just are. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just great. So, um, Rothstein states, the problem with these molecules is that they are present in cannabis at such low levels, it's not feasible to try to engineer the cannabis plant to create more of these substances. We are now working to develop a biological system to create these molecules, which would give us the opportunity to engineer large quantities. Uh, where, where I lost my spot there. Oh, there it is. Anna Hitt's chief, chief operating officer, Darren Kerrigan, who patented the work of the Gulf's researchers, stated, Anna Hitt looks forward to re working closely with the University of Gulf's researchers uh, to develop effective and safe anti-inflammatory medicines from cannabis phytochemicals and would provide an alternative to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And it will commercialize the application of canaflavin A and B to be accessible to consumers through a variety of medical and athletic products such as cream pills, sports drinks, transdermal patches, and other innovative options. Hooray! So, um... Uh, yeah, uh, cannabis, one of the many, 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 many uses and uh, beneficial uses for cannabis. Pain relief, anti-inflammatory stuff there. It's just freaking awesome. It's a wonderful plant. And uh, if you don't believe that, then there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. The evidence speaks for itself. So there it is. Hey there, Hansel. How the hell you doing? <laughs> All right, uh, let's play some more music here. Uh, we'll come back and uh, talk about more of this uh, whatever, whatever kind of stuff is going on out there in the world. And I've got plenty more stories to cover with you, to share with you, I should say. Because that's what I do here. All righty then, let's do this here. This is a woman by the name of Samantha Fish. And I think you'll enjoy her. I, I know I do. Uh-huh, here I am. Stuck in the middle with you. <laughs> yeah, scenes from Reservoir Dog there, Steeler's Wheel. Uh, stuck in the middle with you. Before that, we had Jeff Beck. It says... Jeff Beck in ZZ Top, but it was actually just Jeff Beck and uh, Billy Gibbons. Uh, of course, Tal Wickenfield, who, yeah. Mm. Anyway, we kicked it off with another, yeah, mm, Samantha Fish there. Either way I lose, rec recorded live in New Orleans on May the 2nd. Uh, there. Yes, indeed. Great, great stuff. Uh, very enjoyable. Good music. Um, lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Yes. 
so we're having a little discussion there in the chat uh, during that particular set with Mr. Um, Hans Dietrich uh, about the uh, the whole uh, marijuana uh, pain relief situation. And uh, yeah, yeah, he uh, even though he's a super anti marijuana guy, which I don't really understand, um, because it's such a such a wonderful substance. Uh, he does understand and agree that, yes, indeed, um, it can provide the, the relief, the, the benefits that, that were spoken about in that previous article that I talked about here. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, understand it, believe it, and know that it works in many, many, many wonderful ways. The weed See, he's uh, quoting some stuff here. It says, although Bartlett's team found cannabis, I read that, cannabis to be 30 times more potent than aspirin as an anti-inflammatory in the cell culture, a say, uh, it was 18 times weaker than, I don't know, whatever that word is, endomethacin, which is perhaps why no effort has been made to develop a cannabis as a drug. Yeah, well, um, all that being said, sure, man. <laughs> Good enough. Let's go on to another topic here. Um, since we're speaking of big pharma, let's talk about this big pharma story posted on the Free Thought Project um, yesterday, August 1st. Yes, indeed. And the article is entitled, Big Pharma Admits... Measles outbreak and subsequent media hysteria made them massive profits. <laughs> of course, there's also a study going on, and uh, it looks highly promising that certain extracts of marijuana, cannabis, however you want to put it, are also good as an antibiotic. Yeah. Yeah antibiotic properties of marijuana. And now people say, oh, marijuana can't do all these wonderful things that everybody says it does, but it can. It can. It does. Despite no deaths and very few complications, we can now see that what this measles hysteria and police state action is all for. Big Pharma's bottom line. Yep, that is the case indeed here. Uh, this posted by Matt Agarist here on uh, the freethoughtproject.com. Since the beginning of the year, the Freethought Project has been reporting on the hysteria associated with measles outbreak and subsequent loss of liberties and police state crackdown that ensued. We've seen children banned from public spaces, mandatory vaccinations enforced, with police action and pro-vaccine push in the mainstream media like we have never seen before. In May, the pro-mandatory vaccine push reached a new level as the Washington Post published an article calling for the arrest of those who choose not to vaccinate. Now we're seeing the result of the said hysteria, and it comes in the form of massive pharmaceutical industry profits. On Tuesday, the pharmaceutical in, uh, giant Merck said consumer demand for its measles vaccine and uh, consumer demand, yeah, uh, maybe even, even if it wasn't consumer demand, although a lot of it was due to the fear, uh, it was uh, consumers being forced to use, uh, its measles vaccine skyrocketed thanks to the, quote, outbreak unquote, which helped boost sales in its second quarter. According to CNBC, the sales of children vaccines, which included the New Jersey-based company's MMR vaccine for measles, mumps, and rubella, jumped 58% year-over-year to $675 million. Merck announced in its second quarter uh, earnings that re reported on Tuesday uh, Merck, which is the sole U.S. supplier of measles vaccines, said the, said the strong growth was due in part to this year's phony measles outbreaks 
and the hysteria surrounding it and the fear surrounding it and the force applied to it, which was the largest in the United States since 1992. Uh, Mark Chief Com Commercial Officer Frank Clyburn even mentioned the coverage in the news specifically. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, well, I wonder how much they paid to get on that all that coverage. Anyway, there was some buying to the private sector within the United States this quarter, uh, third quarter, uh, second quarter, based on some of the measles outbreaks that you read in the news, Clyburn said in post-earnings conference call with investors. And we do believe that we'll continue to see growth for our pediatric vaccines going forward. More fear, more fear, more fear. Outbreaks are good for business, and so is media hysteria that successfully whipped Americans into a fit of fear so massive that they are now supporting measures that include locking patients in cages for refusing to vaccinate, as well as banning unvaccinated people from public spaces. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy, man. With more than 700 reported measles cases confined or confirmed in 22 states, it's now a public safety crisis. Bullshit. Nonsense. Crazy. Measles are not a public... Nobody dies from it. And the tools of public safety, arrests, fines, isolation, are absolutely necessary, necessary this would-be tyrant wrote. Kayam referred to those who choose not to vac vaccinate as pro-plague, pro-plague, and free riders who are putting my children and, and our community at risk. But if your children are getting this useless vaccine, which doesn't actually prevent the measles in the first place, and in many cases causes the measles, then how are your children being put at risk if the stuff works, which it doesn't? While this sort of police state talk could easily be dismissed as hysteria from some babbling fool, Kayam is not some random babbling fool. She is the former assistant secretary at the Department of Homeland Security. That's right. This person, who worked for the DHS and could very well pull strings to get her sick desire to force, to force Medicaid society carried out, is advocating for people to be rounded up and thrown in jail for abstaining from vaccines. This is utter dystopian insanity. Uh. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. It's it, it just... It's such uh, it, 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 it's such craziness. Um, anyway, there was some. Oh, I already read that part. Uh, down, 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 down here. Uh, da, 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 lost my spot again. Sometimes when I scroll, my scroll thing goes up instead of down, and, and so I uh, lose my spot. Anyway, according to Kayam, the cases of measles in the United States, which have not killed a single person is a crisis worthy of ushering in Hitler-esque style medical police state like we have never seen. To deter those who think this article is some rabid anti-vaxxer nonsense, it is important to point out that the TFTP, the Free Thought Project, is not anti-vaccine at all. We are merely pro-vaccine safety and pro-informed consent. The irony of many of these folks being pro-choice when it comes to abortion but advocating for the removal of choice when it comes to a vaccine would be laughable, laughable, if it weren't so hypocritically tyrannical. And this tyranny is already happening. Currently, families who are refusing the forced MMR vaccinations in New York are being hit with fines totaling thousands of dollars. The hysteria over the measles outbreak borderlines on insanity, as measles is not even on the list of federally quarantinable diseases. Yet quarantines are already happening, 
and this crazed woman is calling for arrests. Furthermore, though 90,000 people around the world, uh, 90,000 people die around the world from measles every year, according to the WHO, uh, malnutrition, especially vitamin A deficiency, is the primary cause of death in those cases, not the measles. In fact, 75 to 92 percent of measles hospitalization in the U.S. are also due to vitamin A deficiency. Eat those carrots, folks. Even the CDC admits that before measles vaccination program was introduced, nearly everyone contract, uh, contracted measles and obtained lifetime immunity by age 15. I know I did. <laughs> Uh, according to Physicians for Informed Consent, in the modern era, it is rare to suffer permanent disability or death from measles in the U.S. of A. Between 1900 and 1963, the mortality rate of measles dropped from 13.3 per 100,000 to 0 0.2 to per 100,000 in the population due to advancements in living conditions, nutrition, and health care a 98% decline, not the vaccine. They have a chart here showing you that exact number. According to the CDC, since September, there have only been 642 cases of measles in the New York area. There have only been 25 hospitalizations and zero deaths. In fact, in the entire country, there have only been three measles-related deaths in the last 20 years, and these tyrants want you to throw you in a cage for it. Yet still, government is tracking down those who have not received a measles vaccine and forcing them to take it, threatening their very life if they refuse. Well, threatening their freedom. And if, and if you uh, somehow resist their, their attempts to cage you, then they will kill you. That 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 is that is their their process. Um, cage or kill. Obey, cage or kill. And if you don't obey, then they will cage. And if you don't, and if you resist the caging, then yes, they will go on, move on to killing, murdering you for that particular thing. Okay, uh, this apparently this week there was a thing, there was a thing, um, a Google summit for uh, climate change talks. <laughs> the, the, the climate change people that wish to create climate change alarmism all flew to this Google summit in their private jets and on their mega yachts. Uh, yeah, because they, they wanted to do that. They got pictures here of uh, three of these douche hats. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Prince Harry, and Barack Obama. This is on um, page6.com, whatever that is. Uh, so, yeah, all right. Um, posted on July 30th. The world's rich and famous have flocked to a posh Italian resort to talk about saving Mother Earth. But they are sure pu punishing her in the process. The billionaire creators of Google have invited a who's who of A-list names, including Obama, Prince Harry, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Katy Perry. Katy Perry? Really? The Sicilian seaside for a mega party they've dubbed Google Camp. Welcome to the camp. <laughs> I think you all know why you're here. Uh, three, the three-day event will focus on fighting climate change. So they want to fight a natural process. Hang on a second. I'm being asked this question here in the chat. A little delayed. We have a delay. I, he listens on the audio stream, which has got a bit of a delay more than the video, quite a bit more than the video stream. Anyway, uh, Mr. J. Dredd, a.k.a. Hansel, asks me, as a measles survivor, how do you view the world differently? Did you have the desire to be a hippie before you had the measles? I was born a hippie. I didn't know I was a hippie at the time. 
you know, when, when I was in my infancy and toddlerhood and uh, elementary school ages, I didn't really understand what a hippie was or know that, that, that there was such a thing as a hippie. I knew I was different than the, the average folk. But once I got into like junior high school there, I, I understood I was a hippie. And, and I could say even in my uh, seventh grade, one of my seventh grade classes, which was a media, multimedia type class, I, 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 me and a couple of my friends, we, do, we did, had, you had to do videos, different ver types of multimedia presentations um, on, on tape, of course. At that point, there was tape or film that you could use. There was nothing digital back then. <laughs> anyway, so one of the <laughs> the things that I did for that class was was one of the Cheech and Chong bits um, <laughs> about uh, Ashley Roachclip, the uh, president of United Heads for Hemp. When I was 13 years old, I do believe, uh, in in that class. So, <laughs> and and the measles came before that. So um, I, I, the, the measles didn't change my world view at all. They, it was just something that, that I got that everybody got. Everybody got the measles uh, when I was a kid. Nobody died. It, uh, you, you got it. It lasted whatever, a few days, maybe a week, and it went away, and you were good to go. So, yeah, it was just the measles. Every, everybody was fine. And, and back then... Parents would even have what they called measles parties. If one kid got the measles and their, their kids didn't, hadn't had the measles yet, the parents would send the other kids over to that kid's house so that they could contract the measles by, you know, having an overnight sleepover or whatever type of thing and hoping the measles would spread to their kids so their kids could get the measles at a young age, which it's easier to have as a child than it is as an adult. Apparently, that's what I've been told anyway. I've, I, I don't know that for certain. But uh, so everybody got the measles. It was a good thing. It was a positive thing. And you never, ever will ever get the measles again once you've had them. <laughs> but yeah, I was always a hippie. I, I was born a hippie. Maybe it's something from a previous life. I don't know. Or a future life. Could be. Anyway, whatever. So the Google Camp. Back to the Google Camp. The three-day event will focus, or did focus, on fighting the normal natural process known as climate change. Though it's unknown how much time the attendees will spend discussing their own effect on the environment, such as the scores of private jets that arrived, uh, that they arrived in, and the mega yachts many have been staying on, Everything is about global warming. Wait, is it global warming or is it climate change? Make up your mind. Anyway, that is the major topic, a source told the Post. So what is it? Is it pick, make a, pick, a, pick a lane, bye, guys. Because you already said glo global warming doesn't, doesn't work anymore because, well, it just didn't happen. <laughs> the three-day summer camp will cost the tech giant some $20 million dollars. Many of the guests, including Obama and DiCaprio, who has his own climate change foundation, have described global warming. See, they, 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 they can't decide uh, which one it is. As the biggest threat to future generations, which is absolute nonsense. But according to Italian press reports, the attendees were expected to show up in 114 private jets and 40 had arrived by Sunday. The Post crunched the numbers and found that 114 first-class seats from Los Angeles to Palermo, Italy, where camp guests landed, would spew an estimated 784,000 kilograms of CO2, of CO2 into the air, which they believe that CO2 is, is, a, is, is a problem, and it's not, but they believe CO2 is a problem. So they're, 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 they're harping on that. Google Camp is meant to be a place where influential people get together to discuss how to make the world better. Uh, if, they all, if they all just went away, it would make the world better. Uh, there likely will be discussions about online privacy and how to eliminate it, politics and how to make it go their way, human rights and how to eliminate those while making people think they're getting them, and, of course, 
the environment, which makes it highly ironic that this event requires 114 private jets to happen. <laughs> Attendees pay for their own travel to Sicily, but then Google foots the bill for everything at the opulent Vendura Resort, which reportedly features two golf courses uh, where the rooms start at $903 a night. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what a bunch of douchebags. Uh, you know, <laughs> ah, I already got that, didn't I? Tree hugging. Tree hugging celebs. Oh, my God. Yeah, adults just whine about it more than, than kids when they're sick. Absolutely, um, Rome's. I, I do believe that. I, I, I don't know um, if it if it's actually any worse for adults but uh, to, to get a disease like the measles. But, eh. Anyway, the article there goes on to talk about other people that, like Harry Styles, I don't know who that is, Orlando Bloom, I've heard of him, Diane Von Fustenberg, I don't know that. Barry Diller, never heard of him. Uh, oh, DreamWorks uh, founder David Geffen, I know him. Um, Zuckerberg, of course. Uh, uh, other idiots, other morons, other people I could live without ever hearing about again. Sting, Elton John, <laughs> Coldplay's Chris Martin. Really? Coldplay's Chris Martin. How is Coldplay still relevant in any way whatsoever? How are they ever relevant? I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, <laughs> there it is. Oh, and maybe I could get a, get a ticket to this place here. I don't know, but I, I think this would be a good. Uh, Goober, where where where's Goober at? Gooberzilla, we we need your we need your spaceships. We need them now. We need your your starships. We need the faster than light travel uh, because they they found a planet. Well, they say they found a planet. Uh, NASA discovers first nearby. Super Earth, which could, or nearby, yeah, Super Earth, which could be ripe for human colonization. NASA has reportedly discovered a potential Super Earth outside of our solar system, which is located comfortably inside the star's habitable zone, meaning it could be ripe for human colonization. While monitoring the star named J. GJ357, which sits a mere 31 light years away. <laughs> so, you need to have something that travels a bit faster than the speed of light. Unless, I mean, if you could go at the speed of light, it would take you 31 years to get there. So, yeah, that's probably not going to work out too well. So, we need something that goes at least 31 uh, times the speed of light in order to get there in a reasonable time frame. Uh, anyway, so the, the planet sits just 31 light years away in the constellation Hydra. The Space agents, Agency's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite test uh, caught the star dimming every 3.9 days, indicating the presence of at least one transiting exoplanet. After some further solar sleuthing, the researchers came across a clutch of planets most promising was GJ357D, which has conditions which indicate it could sustain life. Given its position relative to its star, the NASA boffins estimate that it receives similar amounts of solar energy that Mars receives from our Sun. So far, so good. This is exciting as this is humanity's first nearby super-Earth that could harbor life, gushed the one lead astronomer. Uh, they are now hoping to discover that the planet has a dense atmosphere that can trap enough heat to warm it and allow liquid water on its surface. Without an atmosphere, however, the planet is likely has an equilibrium temperature of around negative uh, 64 degrees Fahrenheit, which would make it a frozen hellscape and likely nigh on, Im oh, n nigh on impossible to colonize uh, without expending vast resources. Ice picks at the ready, everyone. Yeah, um, here's my question about that is, okay, they found a planet that may be habitable uh, 31 light years away, a super-Earth as they refer to it here. 
Uh, but my question would be is, if it is a super Earth and it is habitable, what makes you think that life is not already formed there, not not already developed there, and that it's it's already owned, occupied by other folk that are living there? Because if it is indeed occupied by other people, and you go and land there, they may not be real real friendly towards you invading their planet and thinking you're going to go ahead and colonize their world. <laughs> yeah, no, that would probably be... Cause especially if they know anything about Earth and how violent the Earthlings typically are, how warlike the Earthlings typically are, uh, how greedy the Earthlings typically are. Yeah, they, they may not want us there. Uh, however, if they did accept us there and we could get there in, in a relatively uh, short period of time, assuming that somehow uh, you could travel at multiple many times the speed of light, or maybe find a wormhole, you know, something like that, whatever, to get there within a few days, then um, and they were accepting, or it, or it was just a unoccupied planet, which I can't imagine, or maybe there was just vegetation... I'd go. I'd be there. If I could get away from, from all of this, these morons that run this place. <laughs> Just something to think about, you know. So, Gooberzilla, get that get that spaceship going, because we could go there. I, I'd travel with you. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd put up with your, your, your lunacy on the way. <laughs> Where, where'd my cursor go? <laughs> I lost my cursor. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna do this here. Um, yeah, that'll work out just fine. All right, this first song is a cowboy tech request, and um, I don't know who this person is singing, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play it, and I I like the title, so uh, hooray for all of that. Here you go, some guy named Wheeler Walker Jr. One, one final thank you and good night, please. Great band, Robin Trower. Let's let him hear it, how we... Yes, indeed. Great band, indeed, there. Robin Trower, The Fool and Me, recorded back on uh, March 15, 1975, at Winterland. Oh, awesome, awesome. Also awesome, before that, Joe Bonamassa doing a distant lonesome train. And we kicked it off there with Wheeler Walker Jr. doing I Like Smoking Pot a lot. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. No, uh, uh, Hansel is saying here, if it, uh, you only think you are safe from space-time anomalies in New Mexico. Definitely not safe from space-time anomalies in New Mexico. I can tell you that I experienced a space-time anomaly here in New Mexico, oh, about 13, 12, 13 years ago, something like that, maybe 11 years ago. I don't know exactly. I think it was 12, 13 years ago. Uh, I was driving back from Arizona there. I, I had gone over there to pick up some stuff from an auction. Uh, what the hell did I just do? Uh, anyway, I, I'd gone over there to pick up some stuff from an auction uh, at this military base in uh, Tucson, and, and I'm, com I'm coming back, and uh, and I'm driving up the road. It just had passed over the border uh, from Arizona into New Mexico, and um, I can't even explain what happened. Really, I, it was it was like time stopped, and everything stretched out. It stretched way out ahead of me, and, um, and I, I was I was driving down the road, you know, 65 miles an hour there, 70 miles an hour, I don't know how fast I was going, but it was, you know, normal freeway speeds there, and um, it, it was the weirdest thing ever, um, I, I had definitely gone through some kind of a time, time, lamp, time event, I, I don't know what it was, uh, but it was, it was, it was the oddest, one of the oddest things uh, you can possibly imagine, um, and and it, it freaked me out there for a bit. You know, I, I like I said, I still have no idea 
what happened or, or it ha don't have any explanation for it other than it was some kind of a time event that I experienced. It was, it was trippier than hell. Um, so, yeah, that was that. <laughs> and uh, uh, other other things that have happened here in New Mexico. New Mexico's, uh, you, you know, people talk talk about uh, Sonoma, Sonoma, Arizona, uh, as having these vortexes and such like that. But whatever I went through was certainly more than the, the vortexes that they experience out there in Sonoma. It, it was trippy, trippy as hell. Um, oh, yeah, I need to do that, don't I? Let's see what I got here. Four and seven is uh, 11. 11, 11, and 5 is uh, 16. Uh, and uh, let me add, uh, let me add, uh, let me add. This one. Okay, 16, and this so it's 20, so I got uh, 10 minutes here, approximately, to do this last one. Um, all right. Okay, cool. Um <laughs> So yeah, I, I don't know if, how many other people have ever experienced that, but uh, time slowed to such a crawl, and then space stretched out in front of me. It was it was wow! It was like uh, you ever seen in like a movie or something like that, where where like people are going down a hallway. And then all of a sudden, that hallway just starts stretching out in front of them. And they can kind of, it's like they're still moving, but they're moving really slow. And the hallway is, is like you could never get to the end of it. Just keeps going out there. It was like that, except I'm not going on the freeway and driving at, at highway speeds, which was um, gnarly. <laughs> But yeah. All right. So here we go. Um, speaking of space travel and such things, NASA may partner with SpaceX for moon mission. What? Yeah. NASA may partner with SpaceX for moon mission. This again over on Minds.com by Subverse. Uh, SpaceX founder Elon Musk talked to Times Jeffrey Kluger, which aired on Sunday morning on CBS. Their conversation bounced from subject to subject, but they talked in depth about future plans of SpaceX. Elon claimed his company was ready to go to the moon within two years, adding that he expects his company to be able to send crews to Mars in four years. His claims that the eye of NASA, which is hoping to put astronauts back on the moon by 2024, but in order to accomplish this feat, they may turn to SpaceX to help reach their goal. Now, my comment on that is this. Get away from NASA. NASA's only going to mess you up and slow you down. Um, if you want to do it, just do it yourself. Get, keep NASA out of the equation. However, NASA's Artemis program is a space flight aiming to land the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024. Moon sex. Yeah, baby. Uh, this would be the first step towards a long-term goal to build a sustainable presence on the moon. Just ask the Nazis how they did it. Laying the foundation for the private companies to build a lunar economy, then... Always comes back to money, doesn't it? Uh, then eventually send humans to Mars. NASA wants to send supplies up to the moon to build a base and begin mining for ice from the hundreds of millions of tons. Uh, turn it into oxygen and then use it to power rockets to send to Mars. Uh, NASA will use the government-funded Space Launch System, SLS rocket, to aid their mission, but launches won't begin until 2021, a report published in October 2018 by NASA's Officer of the Inspector General looked into the cause of two and a half years' worth of delays and $12.2 billion overrun costs uh, developing their SLS, which is intended to be the most powerful rocket in history. And again, you really need to get away from these rockets. These uh, these stupid rockets, uh, they're the problem. You, you need to get to some other type of drive, because rocket engines are not the way to go. 
Anyway, Vice President Mike Pence announced back in March that the that Trumpy uh, would direct the space agency to send astro astronauts back to the moon. Pence explained the schedule for completing the SLS must be accelerated, and there was a potentially an open door to use rockets built by a commercial space flight company saying, we're not committed to any one contractor. If our current contractors can't meet this objective, then we'll find ones that will. And if commercial rockets are the only way to get to the uh, American astronauts to the moon in the next five years, then commercial, ro commercial rockets, they, it will be. <laughs> and again, this, this whole idea, these rockets, these, these are so outdated. It's, it's such a it's such a terrible uh, way of, of getting things into the air. Uh, you need you need something better. You need something that defeats gravity. Uh, and and this these these are not it. This is not the right way to go. So uh, come up with something better and uh, then then tell me tell me that. So um, now here, possibly the worst idea I've ever heard. But you know, Doctor Moreau did it. Why not these guys? I guess, uh, and we all know how well it worked out on Doctor Moreau and his island. <laughs> From the mindunleashed dot com, posted July thirtieth. Scientists get the green light to create human-animal hybrids in Japan. Opponents are concerned that the scientists are playing God. I'm not concerned that they're playing God. I'm concerned of the things they're going to create are not going to be controllable by them. Uh, it 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 is not a yeah. Anyway. Uh, Human-animal hybrids are set to be developed at the University of Tokyo after the Japanese government recently lifted a ban on the controversial stem cell research. Hiro Mantasu Nakauchi, director of the Center for Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine at the University of Tokyo, and a team leader at Stanford's Nakauchi Lab, is the first to receive approval for the questionable experiments which will attempt to grow human cells in a rat and mouse embryos before being brought to term in a surrogate animal. <laughs> this is just wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Let me say wrong. Despite many feeling that such studies are the equivalent of playing God, scientists say the objective is far from sinister. Yeah, yeah the best intentions of mice and men, which is what's being used here, uh, anyway, it's theorized that developing animals with organs constructed from human cells will create organs that can then be used for transplants in human, cutting the long organ donation wait lists. We don't expect to create human organs immediately, but this allows us to advance our research based upon the know-how we have gained up to this point, Nakuchi told the Asahi Shimbun newspaper. Scientists in Japan have been allowed to research the hybrid embryos for some time, but were restricted from going past the 14-day growth period. However, in March, that policy changed when Japan's Education and Science Ministry announced that such creations could now be brought to full term. <laughs> yeah, I saw dog soldiers, too, uh, Hansel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is just messed up. This is just, just <laughs> see if I got these other quick thing here. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, all right. This this is uh, a, a not surprising story, um, and uh, but it's a story you might want to. If you were excited about getting, you, you might be interested in. Um, it's posted on elevenalive.com, and basically what it is. Uh, if you recall the Equifax data leak, which leaked pretty much everybody's information, uh, credit information, um, and to to hackers, yeah, to hackers, um, Equifax finally reached an agreement that they were going to pay seven hundred million dollars, which is like nothing uh, compared to the amount of data that was leaked. 
to people to settle lawsuits over the breach. Um, and, and now they say, well, we probably won't have the money. If everybody wants 125 bucks, which is all they were offering in the first place, is 125 bucks to, 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 I guess, satiate people that were uh, fearful, and rightfully so, that their, that their data was, was being used in a horrible way. Um, you know, <laughs> it's just messed up. Uh, they're not going to have that kind of money. Everybody won't, won't be getting no $125. Uh, if anything, you might get two bucks out of them. But what the uh, Equifax is saying, the FEC is saying, is uh, Equifax is offering free credit monitoring to people. Take that, which you want credit monitoring from the same people that leaked your data? I don't. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with it. Oh, man. <laughs> it's pretty much crazy insanity there. All right, we got to do the last set here. Uh, here we go. Weird Al. <laughs> the Lost Fingers covering Black Betty there for y'all. That's great stuff. Uh, before that, we had the new one from the Texas Hippie Coalition called a Dirty Finger. Yes, indeed. Show me those fingers in the uh, THC. Before that, Metallica, Enter Sandman, uh, live at Trondheim, Norway on July 13th there. So just a couple weeks ago. And we kicked it off there with Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, doing Amish Paradise, one of his uh, greatest tunes. Anyway, thank you all for tuning in. It's been a blast. I, I've enjoyed myself. Time went really fast. I, I didn't even realize we were so close to the end until the I looked and saw there. But whatever. Um, I'll be back again next week, hopefully with the Moose Girl. We'll find out. We'll see. We never know until minutes before the show, for sure. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, hopefully we'll see you then with the Moose Girl. Tomorrow is the Dork Table at noon Eastern right here on RLM Radio with Flash somebody, maybe Vinny. And uh, who knows who else may join into that. It's it's always a crapshoot there. But good stuff, good stuff. I'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern with the Blues. We'll be playing trivia here in the chat, followed up by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up the big old Catawba Pass. And then I will be back on Monday evening with Grim Leftovers. This week I had to, I had to bypass the Grim Leftovers due to a technical issue. <laughs> but I will be back this Monday uh, with the Grim Leftovers at 7 p.m. Eastern. So stay tuned or tune in for that. And check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all the rest. Have yourselves a great weekend. We'll talk to you all later. Peace.